Welcome to uh, Lyons Township High School. Uh, today, uh, we're going to do an example involving finding the EMF, the voltage, okay, uh, created by, uh, or created when a conductor moves through a magnetic field. Um, specifically, though, the magnetic field is going to be created by the current flowing through another wire. And it's actually going to have two pieces to it, okay? So let me draw this out for you. Uh, imagine you have a current carrying wire. Here it is. We'll say the current's going up. We'll call that I, all right? And uh, we have a little chunk of wire. And in the first part of the example, we'll have that chunk of wire oriented this way. That chunk of wire has a length L, and it's moving with a velocity V away from the other wire. And we'll call this dimension A. That's at that, that moment, that's how far away the little chunk of wire is from our current carrying wire. So um, this is a two-part question for this part of it. Uh, part A is uh, which end of this chunk of the wire is at the higher voltage or higher potential? And B, what is the change in voltage or difference in potential from the top to the bottom of the wire? Okay. So um, the two equations that we're going to use here is for a moving wire through a magnetic field, we know that EMF is equal to BLV. And we derived that in class, um, so now we're going to use that result in this problem. Um, we also know that the magnetic field he's traveling through, well, that, well that's created by this current carrying wire. And if I use my right hand rule, okay, the current, the magnetic field comes out of the page there and goes into the page over here. It'll be very, very strong near that wire. And as I get further away from that wire, it's going to get weaker and weaker. Um, so the, ma the, the magnitude of that magnetic field varies with distance from that wire. And the equation is mu naught i over 2 pi r. Okay? So that's going to give us our um, strength of our magnetic field at that point. Okay? So in this case, r is simply a. That's how far away we are from the wire. And um, you pretty much got, we can do the magnitude first. We've, we pretty much got it. Uh, EMF is simply B, which is all this. So mu naught I over 2 pi. We sub in for R. We sub in A. Okay. And then times L and V. So that is the magnitude of the voltage, um, the difference in voltage from the top to the bottom of the little chunk of wire that's moving. Now, the only other question is, which end of that wire is at the higher voltage, higher potential? Okay, so one way I, I kind of explain this is I want you to imagine that this is a little moving battery. Okay, um, that's what EMF is. It's a voltage. It's one of another example is a battery. So imagine it's a moving battery. Which end of that battery is the plus terminal, and which end of that battery is the minus terminal? Well, that's pretty easy to do. So now, even though we know that it's electrons that do the moving in conductors, we're going to pretend it's the positive. It just makes our life a little bit easier. Uh, we, call that, we call that conventional current. So imagine you've got a little positive charge right there. It's one of the many charges that make up that little conductor. Which way will the force on that charge be? Which way will he end up going? Okay. Well, there we can use our Lorentz force rule, among other rules, to figure that out. So uh, for the Lorentz force rule, I'll kind of write that down. Force is equal to QV cross B. Okay. So the, the first term is your, you use your hand and point with the V to the right. Then you curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which for us is the red that's pointing into the page. The force on that single positive charge will be up. Okay. So what's going to happen is, you're going to have your little chunk of wire here. So I'm going to redraw him. Here he is. All right. Okay. At the, en at the end of all this, the top of it is going to be positive. Okay. That will leave behind negatives down here. Now, again, really what happens is the reverse. Really, negatives get forced down, leaving behind positives. But you get the same result either way you think of it. Now, if that were a little battery, which end of the battery is the, the positive terminal? Right there. So this end has the higher voltage, and this end has the lower voltage. Okay. Um, so, for instance, in a, in, a, in a problem, if they said, "Hey, what's the change in voltage going from here to here?" 
you would say positive and whatever number you got, three volts, okay? However, if they said, what's the change in voltage going from here to here? Well, then it'd have to be negative, whatever many volts, okay? So be careful on that. So that's, that's part one of this example, and it's just the easier part. So we found which end of the, of the chunk of wire is the higher voltage, okay? And then we also found what is that voltage, and there it is. And if you had values for A and V and L and I, you plug them in and get a number, okay? Now, for part two of this example, we're going to turn this guy 90 degrees and move him in a different direction. So, I'll leave those up there. So, you might want to recopy this in your notes if you need to pause the video, okay? Recopy this part of it. But now we're going to take that little chunk of wire and orient him that way. And we'll have him move up, okay? We'll still call this A, and he's still got a length L, okay? And again, I'll, I'll kind of fill in that magnetic field we lost here, there, and there. Now, uh, we can't simply just put this in for this. Um, I hope you'll notice that the reason we can't do that is because now that this thing is oriented perpendicular to this wire, the magnetic field strength varies um, along the length of this little chunk. Um, it gets, the magnetic field gets weaker as we move this way to the right, okay? So we're going to have to use our calculus to figure this part out, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to split um, this chunk of wire into a, a DL, okay? So imagine you have a very, very minutely thin chunk of wire. We'll call it DL, okay? It's got a, a very, it's an infinitely testably small L, okay? Now, if I make it thin enough, then the magnetic field for that chunk, little teeny piece of the wire, is relatively constant throughout it, okay? So that little voltage, we'll call that D EMF, okay? So D EMF is B D L V, okay? And then all I'm going to do is add up all those electric fields, or I'm sorry, all those EMFs, to uh, get a sum of the EMF, and we do that by integrating, okay? The left side of this will be the EMF. The right side, um, well, B is still this, so I will sub that in for B. So you get the integral of mu naught I over 2 pi R uh, DL, oh, make that nice and neat, DL times V, okay? Now, you have to get this down to one variable and put the proper limits on the integral. So we have two variables right now. We have R and we have DL. Those are the things that change. Well, I hope you'll recognize, and, and at least in our class, we've talked about this a couple of times now. Uh, how can I rewrite DL, guys? It's DR. Okay, now let me kind of remind you of that. Let's, let's put a number on this. Let's say DL were one millimeter. Okay, <clears throat> what is DR? Well, dr is the difference in the radius from the left end of that chunk to the right end of that chunk. If I take, basically if I make two radii there, r1, r2, and subtract them, that's dr. Well, if I make those two radii and subtract them, I'm going to get that same one millimeter, man. Okay, if that width is one millimeter, of, if that dl is one millimeter, that means the difference in those first and the last radius from the left end of this little guy to the right end of that little guy is one millimeter. It's, so DL is DR, okay? So I'm gonna make that substitution here. So I'm gonna have a DR here, I'm gonna have R there. Everything else is constant. So I'm gonna drag everything else out of the integral. So I'll kind of do that over here. EMF is mu naught is constant, I is constant, two pi is constant, and here our V is constant, and all we're integrating is dr over r. The last thing you got to do is put the right limits in here. Where does this chunk of metal exist, okay, relative to this wire? Well, I start working my way this way. The chunk of wire or chunk of metal starts A away, okay, and the chunk of wire ends over here, which is L plus A away, okay? So all you got to do is integrate dr over r. Um, if you integrate dr over r, that's the natural log of r. So we've got EMF is mu naught i v over 2 pi, natural log of r. Eva oh, evaluated from 
a to l plus a, okay? And then if you plug that in, you get mu naught i v over 2 pi, the natural log of l plus a over the natural log of a. So natural log of l plus a over a. And that's your final answer. So um, again, that's a, a multi-part example uh, figuring out uh, the, the EMF created by a moving conductor through a magnetic field. And in this case, the magnetic field varied over the length of the conductor. So um, I hope that was helpful. And uh, thank you very much.